Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue our introduction to AWS, this time focusing on its global infrastructure, meaning we're going to talk about how physically AWS is set up and deployed around the globe. As per usual, here's my disclaimer about this course and these videos being a high level introduction using oversimplification of concepts to create a frame of reference. So again, everything that I'm sharing here is being deliberately oversimplified only to convey a general understanding and knowledge of the topics that we are currently talking about. So at the end of the previous video, I gave a sneak peek of this map. And what this map is, is it is a map which shows the locations of all of the AWS regions. So what are AWS regions? So each region is a geographical area that is a collection of AWS availability zones and data centers. So just to give you an idea of why there's all of these regions spread out across the world is specifically this. If somebody is in Tokyo and they're using AWS and they want to provision and use an EC2 instance, they want to be able to launch that EC2 instance on physical hardware that is in a data center in Tokyo because they want that physical hardware to be close so there's a lot less latency while transmitting data. Whereas if they had to provision and use an easy to instance, say that was in North Virginia, any data that they were to send back and forth would have to travel halfway around the world and back, thus taking a lot more time and having a lot more transmission latency. So AWS, to be fair to all of their customers around the world and to provide the absolute best performance, has put regions and data centers and physical hardware all around the globe. And there's currently 11 active consumer-based regions with one government-based regions being the AWS GovCloud. And then there is also three, excuse me, four new regions which are currently under development at the time of this recording, which is in September of 2016. So now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on one of these regions to see what's going on. So let's hypothetically say we are zooming in here on the North Virginia region. So once we zoom into an AWS region, we see that it is made up of availability zones. Now, each region may have a different number of availability zones. But for this example, let's say that this particular region has three availability zones. Now, what is an availability zone? Availability zone is actually a geographical physical location that holds an AWS data center. So now we've zoomed into an availability zone and there's where we see the physical hardware, the physical data center where all of the AWS resources and any data or information that you put on AWS is located. So now let me zoom back out again and we'll go through this again. Here are all the regions across the globe that AWS has set up, each region has a set of availability zones. Now, each one of these availability zones contains a data center, and each one of these availability zones is geographically separated from the other. So if this is the North Virginia region, there is an availability zone with a data center somewhere in North Virginia, and then some miles away, whether it's 20 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles, somewhere else in that region of the country, there is another availability zone. And in most cases, there's also a third and sometimes a fourth availability zone. Now, why do they have all these various availability zones within a particular AWS region? And that, again, goes back to high availability and fault tolerance in that, let's say that there was a natural disaster somewhere in North Virginia. There was a major earthquake or power outage or something that actually knocked out one of these data centers. Within a region, there is redundancy across these availability zones. So if availability zone one were to fail or go down, most, if not all of your files have already been backed up in availability zone two and availability zone three within this particular region. So as long as it doesn't knock out the entire region, then you still should be able to access AWS resources and any files or information that you have uploaded and use in AWS. 
So again, when we zoom into one of these availability zones, we see that the availability zone is where the physical hardware that makes up the data center is located. Then it is inside of these servers, inside of these racks, inside of these computers here, where this is located, right? Where your VPC is located, where when you actually launch an EC2 instance, or you place a file inside of an Amazon S3 bucket, we'll back out now, this is all taking place within a data center, which is located within one particular availability zone, which is located within a region that AWS has set up. So again, to zoom back in, we have our regions. Within our regions, we have availability zones, and there are multiple availability zones for redundancy. And then inside each availability zone are data centers, the physical hardware, and then it is on those physical pieces of hardware that you create and provision your AWS resources or utilize something like an S3 bucket. So when you create an AWS account and you go to create a bucket or to launch an Amazon EC2 instance, you're always choosing what region and what availability zone you want those things to take place in. So I hope that explanation gives you a good overarching understanding of the general concepts of how AWS is set up globally and how their infrastructure is viewed from a very high level and then paring it down to a very local level. And with that, we will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.